Welcome to this BC podcast provided by Badminton Europe. My name is Rasmus Beck and welcome to you also, Imogen Banky. Good to see you back in Badminton. Um, Imogen, it's been a while since the fans of European Badminton have seen you. How are you, first of all? Thank you. Uh, it's nice to be here. Um, very well. Happy to be back in Badminton. Uh, doing some coaching now for the French team. So it's nice to be back, see old faces and some new ones as well. So I'm very pleased. Yeah, it feels like a long time ago, 2011, when you and Chris Adcock won that silver medals at the uh, Worlds in, in London. And now in 2018, what has been going on for the last past six, seven years for you? Um, yeah, it does feel like a long time, actually. Um, so I continued to play badminton. Um, I'd stopped the GB system at the end of 2012. Uh, I went back to Scotland to represent Scotland for the Commonwealth Games, which is uh, quite an important tournament for mm. us. So I was there for two years and I was playing with uh, Robert Blair. So I picked up an old partner that I had before Chris. Mm -hmm. um, and we had a really great two years together um, at the end of my career. And I retired from badminton at the end of 2015. 15. Yeah. yeah, kind of. I wasn't really playing in the year 20. Yeah, no, it's 20, 2015. I didn't really play and I officially retired at the end. Mm. Um, so I started a new career um, in, in whiskey, which is an interesting mm -hmm. transition from sports to alcohol. Um, so I'm in my family business now and uh, I worked for a year and a half in Scotland and then I moved to Paris to open a whiskey shop in Paris. So that's been three years now and um, it's going really well. I'm enjoying it and enjoying life uh, outside of Babington. But now I'm also uh, becoming involved with the French Federation, so I'm very pleased to to come back into the sport and, and try and give something back to the French players. Yeah, stepping out <coughs> of badminton, you say that felt good. Uh, why did you want to go back in? I think like the time out gave me a lot of perspective on my own career and I think it's really hard to step outside and, and look at it with any kind of perspective when you're so close and when you're a player. I know certainly I be struggled at the end of my career to, to cope with the highs and lows of being a player. And it was something I wanted to separate myself from and to start a new career and something different. So why do I find myself back like like anyone? Because it still interests me. Mm. Um, I'm still passionate about the game and I think it's I think I have something to give. I have I think I have things to I can teach other players and um so when the opportunity came up with the Federation I said, like, why not? I was really keen. I think it, France and Badminton in France is, is quite an exciting time now, so I'm delighted to be back involved, so it's kind of a... I uh, wouldn't have predicted that four or five years ago, I must say. No, no, let's get back to fans uh, a little later on, but but those things that you feel that you can give back, <coughs> what are these things? Um, I think my experience as a player, uh, when everyone's experience is unique, but how I look at it now is I wasn't really a particularly talented player in terms of badminton skills or physical ability. But still, I managed to make a good player of myself or I managed to become mm. uh, strong in certain areas. Mm. So now I think if I, if, if I can do it when I didn't have all these things and if I could reach a good level, then now some of the players I'm seeing that have you know, great physical ability, uh, good skills, they're powerful, I think, you know, why not? So I think uh, it's more like the, the mentality and the tactical side of the game, which uh, I was strong at and I'm, hopefully I can try and share that with other people because yeah I think it's, it's so important and that's what I try and give the uh, try and give the players now my brain is just working out because if you didn't have the skills as a player if you didn't have physical abilities <sighs> as a bit how did you get that good actually then um I had really good partners no I, I was always lucky with partners I I really did work very hard on on every aspect of the game but I was quite smart, I was intelligent, I was smart, I worked hard at my strengths, I covered up, I hid my weaknesses and tactically I was astute and I had very good partners and it was a timing, uh, it's a timing thing, you know, I think the game's evolved enormously since 2011. I look at the modern game now, I think if I put myself at the peak of my game into the game now, would I be any good? Question mark. I think the game has evolved so much but the timing, you know, when I was at the top of my game between 2010 and 2015, um, I think my skill set it was adapt like quite adaptable to that to that timing and that generation. So, mm. yeah. so you you've had a struggle now, I guess. I think so. I think the physical side of the game now and the physical side and the speed of the of the ladies at the high level. I don't think um, I don't think you can afford to have a sort of skillful player like 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 I was basically. Mm. 
Is that a good or bad development of the game, you think? I think it's a great development of the game. I think, yeah, when I watch the game now at the highest level, there's no loopholes, there's no real big weaknesses. Um, especially like the, the ladies, you know, the ladies are now so strong. It used, it almost used to be if you, if you attacked, if you attacked on the lady, then they couldn't, they couldn't find their way out. And now you just see their, their physical ability, their movement and their skills are just so impressive. So mm. it's, it's a fantastic development for the game, mm. I think. And I think it will just, it'll bring more spectators, more people playing. I think it's, I think it's brilliant. Right. You have the uh, French logo now on your chest, uh, getting involved. You say that's, that's <coughs> a good step for you. But 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 please enlighten me a bit. How how did that happen? Because uh, having a whiskey shop in Paris and then becoming a, a national mm. coach, uh, what's the red line here? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a bit of an odd one. Um, no, I, mean, I, I asked about about what was happening in the federation after the Danish they left, um, and I was interested, so I started asking questions and I started discussing with the federation. Uh, what what they want, what kind of profile they were looking for initially, because I thought maybe I could help them find somebody. And then as as we discussed further and further, I thought hmm, that that could be good, but you know, uh, I'm limited in terms of my time and and what I can do. So we've now arranged it, reached an agreement of of my time and what tournaments I could do and everything. So for the moment, that's working well. Uh, long term, I think we just have to see how how it's going. But mm. um, I'm really enjoying the work I'm doing. Uh, I think it's it's fantastic to be back involved and. I think I can I can give enough for the limited time that I'm there. I think uh, I can give enough. So. Mm -hmm. And looking at those French players now, um, if if we look at the top level, uh, there are of course players competing against the the top players in the world. But what how how do you see the level they actually have the best French players right now? At the moment, we're you know I think at the highest level, a world level, we're not there yet. Um, that does, that doesn't mean we can't get good results from time to time. It doesn't mean we cannot occasionally beat someone but consistently you know we're not a top 10 or even top 20 level as yet um i'm talking about doubles because i'm mm, specifically involved mm, in the doubles mm. um but we're not too far i mean i think the, the line the line is quite thin now between you know the ones who are sort of top 15 mm. i think it's really the consistency and the results they're getting they're consistently reaching the latter stages of tournaments so that's something we're missing um but seeing that, you know, we've got a really young group. They're young and they're quite inexperienced. So uh, I can see a lot of potential in, in the players and and the skill set and the mindset that the, the players have is very encouraging. It's a good squad. It's a big squad. Um, so, yeah, I think there's, it's it's the, the start of a long path because, of course, everything's now for Paris 2024. 20, mm -hmm. um, so it's the beginning of a, a long path. But I think it's realistic to... To imagine that that one day in, in five years' time or or maybe later that one day we can be consistently in the top fifteen. Mm. And, and looking at t Paris twenty five, of course, that's the long run for, mm. for the French players. But but if they also should deliver some results before that, is that is that realistic? I think so, and that's where really I hope to to share with them because that's down really to tactics, uh, mental things, little edges. You know, mm. um, we can't improve real big at aspects of the game in, in such a short time but you know games are won and lost on tiny tiny edges and tiny margins and that's where tactics uh, mental strength uh, all these small things come into play so that's something i hope that i can, can share with them and help them with to try and get short-term results because mm. it's, it's all fine and well saying yeah in 2024 you know we're going to do xyz but in the end of the day you know we need to have results tomorrow we need results in six months we need results mm. in one year so um, I think in terms of short-term goals, it's, it's quite it's quite evident what needs to be done as well. Uh, when you were an active player, Denmark was the dominating factor. They still are. Yeah. Uh, that's no secret. Does France France have the opportunity and the talent to be the new dominating factor in Europe, or should they still say, okay, Denmark is the number one, but we are definitely aim to be the clear one, number two? I, mean, I don't see why the advantage that they have in France is they have such a strong club system. I'm sure you've heard a million times, you know, mm. why are Denmark so strong? Because they have a culture and a history in badminton and they have a really strong uh, and well-run club system. Mm. France isn't dissimilar in that, in, that, in that sense because they have a really great club system. They have uh, good clubs. They have top-class players coming to play. So you think, why? so why not? So why are we not Denmark? Maybe it takes some more time. Um, mm. Could be a timing. It's not instilled in our culture. You know, badminton's not uh, the same I think, level of 
uh, like following as they have in Denmark. So I think that'll take time. But I mean, the the players are there, the club system is there. So why not? But it will take time. It's not something that's going to happen in the next five years. As an outsider coming in, do you feel that the French, not only the federation but also players and the surroundings, do they have the patience to give that time that it need that is needed? I don't know. I, I couldn't say as yet. I don't know enough, uh, and I've been in France for three years, but mm. I really haven't done enough digging into. I've played in a club for five years, and I understand how that works. And uh, I think the the people around the club system are fantastic. They give so much to their club and and juniors and everything. Do they have the patience? I'm I'm not sure. I mean, culturally, I think that's quite difficult for the French. The mm. French are culturally very different from the Danish. Mm. Um, But you know, never say, never say never, and, and why not? There's no reason on paper of what, why we couldn't be one of the one of the European forces in badminton. Mm. It seems like looking also at the European Juniors uh, mm. Championships taking place in, in Tallinn in 2018, looks like the French players is actually also developing better as mm. the younger ones than than the Danes. Is that surprise to you? Um, i think it's surprising to everyone uh, because we always expect that, that Denmark are going to be the, one of the strongest or the strongest in juniors. I think this is maybe one of the first years we've seen you know, a, a group of juniors coming up and being stronger than, than Denmark. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's down to these, these club systems. We have these poles, these uh, mm -hmm. all the cells in different areas of France that develop players and then they come together to create the French team. Um, and it's fantastic. It's great to see such a good group Uh, my concern and uh, and where we should really be focusing is how they're going to step up and make that that next jump into senior badminton because mm. as we all know that's the most difficult step in any young player's development and that's where Denmark have the upper hand even if the group of juniors are less strong now uh, as soon as they go into the Danish system they have they are going to be pulled and pulled from from the top because the seniors are so strong mm. and in France as yet we don't have that real strong group of seniors those real role, role models pulling the juniors up the juniors are almost not almost at the same level but it's not quite the same thing so i think that's really where we need to need to focus on okay interesting um speaking to you uh, speaking to french players talk with center 20 is not that big topic of course it is everybody wants to qualify everyone wants to go to an olympics but it seems like to me that the paris 2020 is so much 2024 of course mm. uh, is so much bigger already is mm. that also the point of view you have uh it's always like that uh, like it, when you've got a home olympics mm. i was there when london got the bid for 2012 but we still mm. had 20 2008 sorry 2000, beijing yeah. to um, to get out the way but no yeah. one talked about Beijing it was all for London so I think that's normal and I've I'm lucky enough to have sort of lived that whole cycle before and I understand the pressure I think that the 16 17 18 year olds in France are now feeling uh, it's, it's your turn so of course the, the, the focus has kind of gone off Tokyo but at the same time that's not a bad thing the players are still going to start uh, an Olympic cycle uh, mm. and we have a group of players that will try and qualify for the games mm. um, but of course in the back of everyone's mind it's, mm. it's going to be Paris 2024 and, and it's, it's no secret that I also invited you because of course that Olympics on home soil mm. you tried it now now you're the coach for the mm. players who's aiming for it what kind of pressure is it actually that you that you will have as a player on your shoulder competing on home soil it's an enormous pressure um, an incredible pressure in, in both a good sense and a, and a, a negative sense um, But there's no pressure like the pressure one puts on oneself. That's that's the worst. I mean, uh, we went to, we went to the London 2012 games and we didn't perform. However, we performed a year. You know why? I'm now, what we're now six years later. I still ask myself. You know why did that not happen? Um, What's the answer to that question then? I mean, that's life. That's sport. You can't always perform. Uh, everyone has bad days. You can't always perform. Like we put immense pressure on ourselves. I know I certainly put so much pressure on myself. Uh, I really believed I went into that tournament believing, kind of blindly. When I think about it, you know, with a bit of logic, you think, well, we didn't really consist. We had a couple of good tournaments. We had a, a, a lot of good tournaments, but we weren't consistently a top five level because mm -hmm. we weren't top five in the world. Mm -hmm. So why would I expect to go into a tournament and win a medal just because it's in my home? 
just because it's in my home country or just because I think everything will just work out for me, you know, what an idiot, you know, but no, but nobody, <laughs> nobody burst the bubble, you know, so I really learned the hard way. But at the same time, you have to believe it, you mm -hmm. know, maybe I believed it too much, which means when the fall was extra tough for me, the fall was really tough when you really, when you put yourself in the line and think, I'm, go I'm going to win it and then you get brought down, it's terrible. Yeah. But, you know, hopefully I can try and relieve the French players of a little bit of that, that, that stress and try and put things a bit in perspective for them because it, I think it will be quite tough. They'll have a lot of pressure. Do you think that we will see French medalists at the badminton event at the 2024? I hope so. I mean, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be sitting here if I didn't think so. Uh, I think we have all the tools to make it happen. Um, I think culturally, France is making, when I say culturally, the, the culture in the, in the Federation and in, in INSEP, you know, our national centre, is slowly making progress. Um, I think we have the group of players. I think we have the the capability to, to create world class players. Can you count on anyone to produce produce a medal on the day? No, I mean that's that's sport. But all we can do is put put the players in the best possible frame of mind and best possible pre preparation for the next what eight years now. Mm. So it's it's a long time, but why not? I mean, why not? Yeah. Yeah. I don't think it's fair to put on names uh, because these guys and girls might mm. be quite young still. But but can you see as a coach that there are certain categories where you always already can see now we might have a better shot here than here? Um, well, to be honest, I mean, the juniors, because I'm not involved with the juniors at all. Um, and I think when we talk about 2024, we're talking about largely the juniors and then some of our younger players. Mm. Um, I mean, I'm very much focused on, on the doubles. I can't really speak for singles at the moment, but I know, of, of course, that the pop of uh, the young pop of boys mm. are inc incredibly promising in terms of their, their performance. But I think there's, within singles, so much depends on the transition from junior to senior. Mm. I think it will be a real... Well, they're already in that transition, and, and let, let's see what happens. Mm. But, um, I mean, in the doubles, I think I think it's quite an equal spread. I really mm. think we have we have people in every in every event. There's no real big kind of lap, so we just don't have any singles, we don't have any ladies, so it mm. seems to be quite a complete group. Yeah, because if you look at the at the results that the younger French senior players has actually delivered in 2018, it seems like players like Tom, mm. uh, Guichel, uh, Léa Palamo, Delphine Delrue, they're on the right track. Of course, they still need to do something, mm. but but would you be surprised to see these guys in Paris 2024? I, I, I guess not. No, I wouldn't be surprised. Like for me, they're, they're on the path, you know, everything, Everything they do in every tournament they play is just it's just a means to an end. It's a learning experience and okay we expect to get results after a certain point, but everything now is just a process. Um it's a process every day in training, it's a process and they need to play I don't know, put a number on it, two hundred matches, you know, mm. five hundred matches, you know, before mm. they get to the stage where mm. they're gonna be consistently beating top ten players. Mm. But I mean the names you mentioned, they're they're on track, they're on track, they've got eight years. Mm. Um, eight years to get to that level it's more than enough time mm. uh, Just they just need to keep them the mindset that's the hardest battle I'd say and of course it's a process part of the process is also the coach mm. uh, Imogen Bank your coach for the French team in 2024 mm. how does that sound? I mean, I'm involved now like I'm really enjoying what I'm doing um, I've been there for what three or four months so it's really difficult to say I mean yes that's going to happen no that's not mm. going to happen um, I have my, my job now, I'm there at certain times, I really love what I do, uh, I try and make a difference and I hope I do make a difference, but you know, there's a lot of water to go under the bridge before those kind of decisions are going to be made, so I'm going to be really politically correct and say... It's a political you know, answer, right? Yeah, it's a really political answer, yeah. I, I hope to be and, and I would love to be, but let's just see what happens over mm. the next few months. Yeah, and the next few months coming up, 2018 getting to the end soon, 2019 coming up soon, uh, European Games uh, very soon in June next yep. year, a uh, multi-sport event, yep. uh, only the second edition. Um, maybe there would be a better chance to get a, a French medal at, at the European Games than the, the Tokyo Olympics, or how do you see that? Yeah, I, mean, I think it's a stepping stone. It's like all these major events, we, we really shouldn't forget about them. I mean, that's what I try and tell the players. There's, there's, there, should be many, there should be many highlights of, of the year, many focuses of the year. We can't just say, put it all in the bin. Because all the only thing that's important is Tokyo or, or Paris. Mm. Um, so there are many milestones I think we should be focusing on. European Championships, World Championships, European Games. So it'll be interesting and it's all part of a stepping stone, you know. Mm. If we can get a medal there, then what's the next step? And I think it's it's completely logical to have that on our on our maps. Mm. 
and being part of these multi-sports events. You have, of course, tried it at the Olympics, but also on the level below it, uh, mm. Commonwealth Games mm. is the best example right now also for you. Um, what does it mean for as an athlete actually to go to these multi-sports, multi-sports events also to gain some experience? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's an experience that's it's very important. Otherwise, the Olympics is the only time you're going to play in a multi-sport and its environment. And it is is really different. It's a different atmosphere. It's a different preparation process. So it's a great chance to put that into practice. We were lucky with the Commonwealth Games and uh, and it's really fun. I mean, that's that's why we're here, isn't it? Well, obviously, it's high level sport, but it's, it's really nice to have a good time as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think a multi-sport environment is a, a great way for, for the athletes to see other sports, to to meet other people, to have a different perspective on, on what they're doing and, yeah, and essentially to prepare for the experience of an Olympic Games, which is quite special. Imogen Benke, it's lovely to see you back in Badminton. Thanks for stepping in again. And uh, thank you very much for watching all of uh, the uh, podcasts that we're doing at Badminton Europe. Imogen, thank you for coming. Thank you. And uh, stay tuned and download the new app if you have something that you need to spend some time on. Badminton Live, find it in the App Store and in Google Play. Thank you very much. Mm-hmm.